right, Algebra 1, Lesson 91. This one is on Multiplicative Property of Inequality, and then we're going to learn spheres. Two totally different lessons regardless. Okay, now, I'm going to make this simpler. If you want to read on page 378 and 379 and learn how they're teaching you to do it, you can. Um, but I have found a better way that's easier for my brain, um, and so that's what I'm going to teach you. So. This is example 91.1, and it tells me this. Graph the solution, and then it gives me a solution. And the solution is negative x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay? Now, the best thing I, and oh, let me tell you this as well. Then it says that, that little um, semicolon, and then it says d, domain, equals and then it says reals and basically what that means the is real numbers. numbers that's what you're going to graph now so we're going to just put this to the side for a minute and just do our solution so if we're going to graph this there's a problem because we have a negative x okay my encouragement to you is to pretend like this is an equal sign okay and if that were an equal sign then i would move this negative x over here and this positive 2 over here so let's do that. So this negative x, I'm going to make a positive x, because when you move it across the equal sign, right? And then this, I'm going to bring this down, my equal sign, per se. And then this 2 is going to become a positive, negative, negative two. 2. Very good. <clears throat> so this says x is less than or equal to negative 2, or negative 2 is greater than or equal to x. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make it where my x is first. Okay. And x, since the arrow is pointing at the x, the arrow points at the x, and it has a negative 2. Yep. This is just rewritten. Mm -hmm. See that? So my answer is this. Yep. So now they're wanting me to graph it. Do you understand what I just did? I do. Okay. So all I wanted to do is get rid of the negative x. So mm -hmm. the best way to do that is just move it across the equals. Yes. Now they did something using multiplication. Multiply this by something, multiply this by something, and then change this sign. Mm -hmm. To me, that's more confusing yeah. to just do it like this is easier. So, x is less than or equal to negative 2. So, so, if x is less than, let's just pretend it said less than. If x is less than negative 2, then it's this way, right? But it's also equal to negative 2. So, you fill it in. And because it's real numbers, it is all of these. Okay? If it just said integers, then we would literally have to put a dot on all of those. Yeah. Okay? Remember that rule? Alright, so that is our answer. All of it. Got it? Alright, I'm going to leave this chart here. Alright, so that was graph that solution. Now let's try this one. Graph this solution. 4 minus x less than or equal to 6, and now they tell me this. The domain is integers. I'm going to put in. Okay? Alright, so here's our problem. Again, I'm going to make this a plus negative. I want this negative x to go across, and then I want this 6 to go across. So this is 4 plus, and this 6 I'm going to bring over and it will become a negative 6, right? is equal to, that's our pretend equal, and then this negative x becomes a positive x. Uh -huh. Okay? But we don't like looking at x equals this. Okay? So we're going to change it around. Well, let's want an answer 4 plus negative 6. Negative 2. Negative 2. So x, negative 2 is less than or equal to x, or if we changed it around, it would be x is, and see how the greater than sign is with the x? Than or equal to negative 2. Or greater than or equal to negative 2. See how I did that? Yes. This is just rewritten from here to here mm -hmm. to make the x the first one. Okay? So if x is greater than negative 2, so greater than negative 2 is this way, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also equal to negative 2. But I'm not supposed to graph all real numbers. I'm supposed to graph integers. Integers. So I'm just graphing the integers that are greater than negative two. So I literally would fill in this, fill in this, fill in this. So I'm just going to fill it up above. That's what I would show. Mm -hmm. Okay. This dotted line. That does that. Okay. Yeah. Now normally it would be on here, but I'm trying to reuse this again and again and again. Mm -hmm. you got it. All right. I think there's one more, or maybe two more. One more, and then we're going to learn about spheres. Graph the solution, and here's what they say. Negative 
3x plus 4 is less than or equal to 13, and the domain is reals. So, everything. Okay? Now, here we go again. We want to get what? Tell me what to do. You want to get the x on the other side. Okay. So, since the x is with the negative 3, we need to get the whole thing over there. Okay. So, tell me what to do. You put the negative three x on the other side, which becomes a positive three x. Good. And then you put a thirteen on the left side. Which okay, so we put 13. this over here, and we're putting this over here. Which goes to negative thirteen. So this is going to be negative thirteen plus four equals three x. There you go. All right, so let's answer this. It'd be negative nine. And then it'd be three x is greater so than. So this there. says three times x, and we want to get the x by itself. This times three becomes divided by three. So it'd be negative. So then x greater than or equal to negative three. negative 3, but that's not how we like to see it. Maybe x, x is greater than or equal to negative 3, or positive 3. No, negative 3. Negative We're three. just switching oh, yeah, this around. Right, right. We're not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're just changing this to be the x on the side to see it. Okay. So x is greater than negative 3. So negative 3 is here, and it's greater than negative 3, but it's also equal. And we are doing all real numbers, so that is right. Okay? All right, let's move to the second part of the lesson, which is spheres. All right, and a sphere is like a basketball. Okay? Three dimensions. It has a length, a width, a width, and a height. Length, width, height. Okay? So it, because it has three dimensions, it's going to be volume is what we're trying to find. Because volume is three different uh, measurements. Okay. So, let me show you an example. The best way to do these kind of examples is to, something like that. You can kind of tell that it's a basketball. Okay? Now, there are, um, I want you to help me. Uh, there are three formulas that we're going to write down. One of them you should already know. Okay, so because, think about a basketball. If you were to put a shape inside of it, what shape would it be? Circle. A circle. Okay, so help me figure out what is the area of a circle formula. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Pi? R squared. R squared. Very good. Okay, that was kind of important to know, but then we moved up to um, knowing this. Now, pretend it was in a case. It'd be a one, cylinder. It'd be one third. Okay, a cylinder. This is the only thing a basketball could fit in is something like a cylinder, like a, a big uh, garbage can or a big um, soda can, whatever. That's what a basketball would fit in, depending on how what size it was, okay? So, the um, I want to figure out this. Do you remember what the volume of a cylinder is? No. Okay, you need to write this down then, okay? The volume of a cylinder is, now I'm going to show you something real quick. You twice, um, you times the radius twice, which is going to be, so you're going to times the radius twice, pi r squared, which ends up being this. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is really what you need to know. The volume of a cylinder is 2 pi r cubed. And why is it cubed? Because it's volume. Volume is always cubed. Okay? So this is 2 pi r cubed. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need to memorize that. That's going to be something you're going to need to know eventually. Okay, now that's the volume of a cylinder. Well, then what is the volume of a sphere? I want to write this down. Okay, the volume of a sphere is two thirds of that. Mm -hmm. So, two thirds of this. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they've come up with an equation that's just simpler to say 2 times this would be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Got it? Yes. So this is the volume of the sphere. 4 thirds times pi r cubed. Okay? And the volume of a sphere is 2 thirds of the amount of a cylinder. So one third of it is still missing, which is the volume of the cylinder or the portion of the cylinder part. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. So 
That is something you need to remember. Okay? Do I have to memorize that? You have to memorize that. All right. So now that we know that, let's find the volume of a sphere whose radius is three centimeters. Three centimeters. Yeah. Three centimeters. The radius is three centimeters. So if I was going to find the volume of a sphere that had a radius of three centimeters. All right. Tell me what I would do. You do the pi times the radius, or pi, so it'll be three times three first. Almost. Radius cubed. So this would be four thirds times pi, which is times the radius cubed. Which would be nine. Three times three times three is nine. So then we multiply nine times 3.14, 27.58, something like that. And then we're going to take four thirds of that, which is going to be what? You don't have to do it. And it's end up going to be 113.04 centimeters cubed because we're finding volume. Mm -hmm. Okay? Volume is always cubed. Area is always squared. Got it? Yep. All right. Now, you feel like you understand that pretty good? You could take any radius mm -hmm. and put it into that formula and figure it out. All right. Now, we're going to learn a different thing about spheres. And this time what you're going to learn about spheres is the surface area, the area of the surface. Okay, and because it's area, my answer is going to be something, something squared, right? Because that's what area is. Now, let me explain to you what surface area is of a basketball. Okay, it's kind of hard to take a surface of a basketball and figure out what is the area of the whole thing. Yeah. So all you need to know is that the surface area of a sphere equals the sum of the area area of four circles. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you're basically going to find the area of your circle and multiply it by four. Because you have to pretend like there are four circles within a sphere. Okay? So, the surface area of a sphere equals the sum of the area of four circles. Okay? So, guess what? We can come up with a um, formula, an equation, whatever, a formula, probably the best way to say it. So, if I know that the area of a circle is pi r squared, and in order for me to find the surface area of a sphere it's is the nine. sum of the area of four circles, then you're basically multiplying that times four. Yeah. You get it? So you get that answer and you multiply by four, basically. Right. So you basically find the area of the circle you multiply and multiply it by four. So if you want to write this down, the surface area of a sphere formula is four pi r squared. So here's what they say to me. Find the surface area of the sphere whose radius is four meters. Okay? So let's figure out what this would be. Pi, r would be 4 squared, and then 4 times that. So what is 4 times 4 squared is 16. So then 16 times pi times 4 is going to end up being 200.96 meters, and because we're finding area squared. Got it? Mm -hmm. Final answer. That is lesson number.